if he gets his hand on that champion again, yeah. he's been doing really well with it all tournament. An AD carry, very well situated in terms of the Trinity Force patch that we are on right now. This is the same patch that was at the World Championships. We haven't moved the tournament realm over yet. And Aatrox going down as well. They don't want Daydream to be on his preferred jungler. And the first pick of Ezreal, no surprise either. Now, Emperor has done well with Caitlyn also. Yeah, that's true. He has been a, a pretty solid Caitlyn player. Remember that Lucian is not available yet on the tournament realm here in Korea. He's kind of like the other Trinity Force AD carry that we've been seeing. Uh, Samsung Blue's been using him a lot last week that was played on the live realm, but won't see anything like that today. So Thresh and Elise, the two pickups. Well, not too surprising. Pretty common picks for this point in time. I am a bit surprised that they went for that Thresh pick over Zyra, who is generally thought to be the strongest support. So we'll have to see yeah. what they, they want here. Thresh better at setting up picks if that's the kind of composition you want to go for. And Elise also great for that same purpose. Well, it seems like you see a lot of, uh, it's more preference between Thresh and Zyra right now. And again, Zyra's kind of like on her own island among the support pools we've seen here in Korea. And it looks like Jarvan and Renekton, the two pickups. Renekton is super strong right now. And a good like anti-Shen we found. Okay, well now we have the Vayne pickup as well and the Shen, so oh, yeah. we do have a pretty solid pick and split push comp going on right now yeah. for CJ Blaze. Flame had some great taunts against Najin Sword when he picked up that Shen. And will it be a Lulu actually? We have not seen Lulu in quite a while. Well, if they want to go all in here, then yeah, this is... Makes sense. No, oh. there we go. The Zyra pickup, perfectly fine as well. Gives you a little bit more versatility. Yeah. And also, both champions, however, very good at bullying during the laning phase. And Ari was played by Goon. Also, against the Jyn'Air Stealths. So... Uh, he did pretty well on that champion. It was the game that they quite nearly lost, but it was pretty much Goom's already that single-handedly turned it around by catching out the AD carry from the Stealth's Mystic while they were assaulting the Nexus. Right. Man, that was a close game, too. What an awesome game. And I was going to say, yeah, Talon Unlikely Fizz, much, much more natural right now. And so Ambition will be playing the Assassin in the mid lane. Yeah, with CJ Blaze's composition, however, it's going to be pretty difficult for them to fight 5v5s here. Uh, this is much more about small skirmishes and picks. It's a pretty dedicated pick composition. It's a pretty CJ Blaze composition, too. Yeah, and the reason is, is because they want to create picks with Shen Ult, and fighting 5v5 going to be difficult because so many of their champions are squishy, and also they don't have a good way to really get Shen into the back line besides uh, with that Elise, and that is not the most reliable uh, form of getting Shen in. Yep, that's right. Well, there's our rosters, and in just a moment, we'll be moving into game number one. We'll find out if Najin White Shield can bring their A game, give CJ Blaze a run for their money, or if CJ Blaze will go on to take out Samsung Blue, or to take on Samsung Blue in the finals tomorrow. And I think it's time, guys. Our monitor's blank right now, but I'm going to assume that right now the camera is swinging its way across the audience. And that means it's about time to get into game number one. CJ Blaze versus Najin White Shield. Let's get in the game. All right, guys, here we go. Najin White Shield moving out on the map. Their opponent, CJ Blaze. And we will find out what happens in game number one. Sorry, a little bit distracted right now. Technical difficulties, but as long as you can see the game, we're happy. Yeah, that's right. And so CJ Blaze's comp right here, they have, in, like I said, in really solid pick potential. And the laners of Najin White Shield are going to have to be very careful that they don't get caught out uh, during the mid game. That said, Najin White Shield has a pretty solid engage advantage uh, heading into the mid and late game if they're 5v5. So. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. If Nodge and Shield can get their rotations down properly and group pretty early on in that mid game, I think they'll have a pretty solid edge. Really deep wards going down. Really deep wards, and that's an interesting one right there. Yeah. They're definitely making sure that they keep track of absolutely everything. We'll see what they do with this advantage if they want the 2v2.
or if they want the 2v1. Well, they clearly have something in mind. We'll yeah. find out. I mean, it's interesting. We've seen Renekton players start to be pretty successful at bullying the, sh the Shens out in the 1v1. Do you think that's something that they're trying to avoid here, possibly? Yeah, we'll see what, what exactly they do here, but it's... It depends on the kind of Renekton build as well, because when we've seen that Tiamat first, it's been a little bit more effective yeah. in terms of bullying and keeping Shen all the way pushed up against the turret, and that makes it easy to control with Stand United where he's going to be going as well. Right. Now Blaze coming in. Now the blue buff area of shield. And looks like they're just going to go ahead and take the blue. We'll see if shield responds by grabbing the other one. Red first for Nofe, though. Yeah, interestingly enough, this actually isn't too much of a tell right here because Blaze doesn't have the wards where yeah, they can't Nofe's really not going, or where he's going to be walking. So huh. this may leave Daydream a little bit in the dark. We'll have to see where he goes on for his next buff, and it looks like he's already turning around. You can see that Flame is mirroring so far, so he's going to be heading over to that lane a little bit late, and he shared XP with Daydream early on. Yeah. I'm really going to be watching this mid lane matchup, man. I mean, Ambition has looked quite a bit better lately than he has of late. Moving out on Goong right now, doing some decent poke damage. Look at that. Got Goong down to about half health there. And Ambition, I mean, the, the kind of running joke used to be about how he always gave up first blood, and that's been uh, kind of changed around 180 so far in this tournament. Yeah, and look at Nofe going so deep already to push Flame out of lane right here, yeah. and that jungle presence really doing some work now. He did manage to get a little bit of an XP advantage because he didn't have the follow, and wow, Goog just oh, shot man. his charm off in a random <laughs> direction right there. It's not a lucky charm. It was not. Well, lucky for Ambition anyway. And save being reduced having to farm some wolves here. Well, this is already teams. a really interesting early game. Uh, yeah. We typically don't see this much uh, action from the jungle at level one, but this is going to cause perhaps a pretty early turret swing here in Najin White Shield's favor. Man, look at Flame. He's just given up and come up to mid lane. Going to go ahead and give up that bot lane turret. Well, he was seeing if he could indeed make a play right there. He's not going to be able to, but might as well, if you've got the time, try and do a little bit of something, but they're going to get the turret advantage first, and it looks like Najin White Shield may keep pushing. This is actually pretty reminiscent of, of stuff we were yeah. see seeing very early on in Season 3, but hasn't really been in vogue for a while, just these three-man shoves, and a lot of the reason why the turret changes with the earlier armor came around in the first place was to prevent this kind of play. Well, you just apparently add a third person to the lane, and then you can do it, but wasn't it wasn't it Blaze who got like a 12-minute inhibitor doing something, kind of like an extreme version? Whoa, this, this really is actually dragon. crazy. No way. I mean, you can tank a little bit with the plants from Zyra. But this is such a smart reaction oh, right yeah. here. Goong. Oh, Goong. He gets away, though. Very nice. That could have been first blood, and Najin White Shield gets Dragon. Now, this is a very smart use of their time. Because they had no fake, this is a great early game plan, and this is the planning and the teamwork and the strategy that... Uh, we were talking about earlier yeah. from Nodge and White Shield. So because Nofe was at the tower earlier, it helped them take down the tower faster. They then shoved up the lane to prevent the freeze because they don't want Blaze doing what they do, which is freezing a lane at second turret and just farming. Oh, he grabbed Goong. Is this going to be first blood? Goong taking a lot of damage. Ambition going deep. Can they get him? There's Repel. Daydream comes in for the execute. He's going to pay for it, though. 1-1, one, one, but the first blood gold does go to CJ Blaze. Yeah, that, I'm not sure how long the red buff had, so if it was about to expire, it, it was worth it. If It had a little bit of life on it, which it shouldn't have at this point in the game. Yeah, it should have uh, been nearly gone. Yeah, it should have been nearly gone. So, yeah, overall, a little bit of a risky play right there. But anyway, so they shoved the lane. To go back to the other point, they shoved the lane all the way up to the second turret to make sure that there couldn't be any kind of lane freeze there from Flame, which is exactly how he likes to play. And because they were on the bottom part of the map, while... CJ Blaze was doing the same thing. They took use that advantage and the knowledge of where the duo lane was to take that very, very early dragon. Well played by Notch and White Shield, and they come out with an early advantage. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I mean, I almost wonder. And Ambition going in on the Goog again. A lot of damage, but here comes Nope. Ambition doesn't have. He hasn't flashed yet. There it is. Looks like he will get away. Three members from CJ Blaze coming up. 
Close call for Ambition. Had to use his flash, but it was worth it. Nofe did use his flash as well during that. And it's worth noting, too, that all of the members of Najin White Shield, effectively, we've got three people that came back with pink wards oh, very early on. Emperor, Emperor gets, gets caught a little bit. Yeah, gets hit by that charm, takes some damage. So we have very early pink wards coming into this game, and this is how they played early on against the Jyn Air Stealths, and they're pretty crushing victory over them. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have to see what they do exactly with these pink wards. Yeah, pretty much everybody on Najin White Shields just fought a pink ward in their last So back. early. Yeah, I love this. This is really cool. I mean, you can tell that Najin White Shield has used their time well. They've developed a lot of new stuff, or a lot of tweaks on old stuff anyway. And there's that really deep vision ward by Blue. Yeah. Oh man, they've got such good vision right now. Well, they're playing this very intelligently. Now against yeah. the Stealths, they turned the early vision. They really maximized the gold gain, for, or the, the gold that they invested into those wards by continuously making plays around the map and assisting uh, their rotations with that vision advantage. Uh, but when you do spend the month, like we see so many vision wards that the gold difference is actually effectively even if they don't use these vision wards well. You know, and this really uh, makes you wonder about that early dragon. That very early dragon gives them the gold to spend on yes. these early pink wards. And now we'll see if they can get some sort of payoff for the vision control they've gotten now. Well, they're starting to group mid here. And Flame and Ambition doing what Flame and Ambition do, which is empty lane farm. Yep. This is falling back on old habits for sure. This looks like a pretty common CJ Blaze game. Meanwhile, we've got 2v3 here in the mid lane. Yep. Dodge and White Shield pushing up pretty aggressively, but here comes Daydream. You know, Doa, one of the main problems with CJ Blaze's comp in this situation is that they have virtually no wave clear. So any kind of three-man push like we're seeing right now is very, very hard for them to deal with. And so I like what we're seeing from Najin White Shield. They just have to make sure they don't lose any turrets in the process. Good point. So far, so far so good. One turret down for each team, just the top and bottom turret. And Flame right now pushed really deep down the lane. You can see it on the minimap. We're not looking at it at the moment. But. Yeah, and Save hasn't been really maximizing his advantage so far. He's fallen quite far behind on CS because Flame is actually empty farm bottom lane and then immediately rotated top to empty farm that lane as well. Yeah. Ambition. Oh, he's getting red. He gets it. Yeah, he may not. We'll see if he can get out of this. He will. A little bit sloppy buff control right there. Not a lot of excuses because they knew that Ambition was around there, and they've got certainly got the wards to prevent that red buff. Yeah. We'll see. Those vision wards have got to be starting to get towards the end of their life right now, too. For Nodge and White Shield. Okay. Well, Ambition's still on the hunt a little bit, but they've managed to keep tabs on him this entire time. And look at the ring of wards now. So the wards have expired in the river for CJ Blaze. Yep. Well, we're reaching the point where those pinks are about Ooh. to go down as well. So far, not a ton of damage on Ambition. That playful trickster helping out quite a bit. Dragging up in about a minute again. We'll see if Najin White for it. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Save is playing this very passively in the lane. Uh, just yeah. going back and taking the wolves. Uh, Najin White Shield needs to be more aggressive about pushing their advantage. They have absolute control over the map right now. And they just need to continue shoving that mid lane into the tower. Because with their poke against the lack of wave clear from CJ Blaze, they will eventually win this. Almost looks like a three-man ARAM in the mid lane. Yeah, except they, they're just not quite going hard enough here. Though. Yeah. Yeah, it seems that way. And you do have to wonder a little bit with Save. You know, is it, he looks a bit intimidated right now to try to tangle with Flame. Flame with a level ahead. Yeah, he also yeah. doesn't have that Tiamat, which is what he's going to be going for this game. So he's, we will be seeing that build come out one more time. Yeah, and I mean, it looks like Flame with all that extra farm, too, is just ahead enough on items that it's going to be tough for Save to really bully him. Look, he's already down at about half health. And when we saw this work against Shen before, oh, we got the charm. Not able to capitalize on it, though. Nice there. But you know, when we saw that Tiamat on Renekton before, even when he picked up the pickaxe, he was already pushed up far enough to make it really tough for Shen to really do anything about it. And it just does not look like that's what's happening with Flame. Yes, save having to pop Dominus right there, too. He also can't leave that lane because he needs to make sure that Flame can't get in with the Stand United in case 
the CJ Blaze members in mid decide to go all in right here. Yeah. And he's going to have to back off. And you'll see that his recall immediately prompts White Shield to pull off the turret. Yep. Because uh, he has to go back. He has to go top off his health. And this is an opportunity for Dragon for CJ Blaze, too, possibly. They're moving down there right now. Yeah, CJ Blaze, or er, Shield has been playing this too passively so far. And they really, unlike what we saw earlier, they really didn't do anything with the gold that they had managed to acquire early on in this game. And now we're actually seeing CJ Blaze a little bit ahead, but more ahead than it would seem because Najin Shield invested so heavily into wards that they really didn't get much of an advantage from. Yeah, that was a bit odd. Still a fairly close game, though. A lot of it depends on if CJ can get some of those picks that they want to get later in the game. And they do want that dragon, it looks like. Yeah, they're and going for it. They've got, there's no vision there for Najin White Shield. They probably know where they are, but still. There they go. And there's not really anything that's being done right here by Najin White Shield either. Yeah. They're not taking this advantage, although we'll see what Nofe can do up in this top lane. They need to deal with Flame. He's getting pretty huge. He's already got his Sunfire Cape. It's going to be really hard to dive him under turret, but they're sending four people up there. Uh, they could do it with total. four. Yeah, Flame they, backing off now. He knows. They really just want to oh. get the turret down. Ooh, Flame needs to be a bit careful there. Yeah, they'll just get the turret instead. So can CJ Blaze push his mid turret response? Uh, I don't think, again, they don't have the greatest wave clear ever, so it is going to be pretty hard, especially since they have to worry about getting collapsed on now from the top lane that the turret is down. They will yeah. have to pull off pretty darn quick. Well, they did some decent damage to the turret, so got something done, but they are cutting it pretty close. Yeah, they're okay, though. Looks so, like. yeah, Ambition being left down here in order to try and take this bottom turret as well. Yeah, Najin Shield just not playing with the same degree of confidence that we saw earlier on in this WCG tournament. And they have to be careful because this is exactly oh, the kind go. of game. Oh, here we go. Ambition getting jumped on. There's the ultimate from him trying to get away. Stand United coming in. They do get the ult out of Flame, but Ambition gets away. That turret very low, too. Yeah, that's actually going to be a big win for Najin White Shield because a lot of what they were doing um, depended on that Shen ult being down just for their own peace of mind. They saved the tower as well. Yeah. So now is their time to really start moving in and shoving these towers much more aggressively. Well, you can see save rotate, rotating into the mid lane right now, so it looks like that might be the order of business. Never mind, they're leaving the mid lane. Uh, yeah, save's probably going to keep split pushing just because he has that Tiamat. He's going to be much more useful in terms of wave clear and keeping the pressure up. He'll be able to outpush Shen at this point. So CJ Blaze may just go ahead and give up this middle tower. It doesn't have a lot of HP left on it anymore. So here we go. Save is going to push the lane in, and he will be joined pretty quickly by Zephyr right there, who may be able to take down the few remaining HP. We'll see. Save lurking river for now. I always wonder about the little hooks on Thresh's head. Because he can animate the other ones, so does he use those to like eat with? That's right. They like rotate down to like grab a hamburger or something and like hook it into his mouth? Yep, it's just like an octopus. I'm pretty sure. What else would little hooks on your head be for, I guess? I don't know. Well, the deep sea Thresh has an octopus head, so oh, that's, well, yeah. that's then confirmed. It's obvious. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Now we figured it out. Those are prehensile eating appendages for Thresh. So Fizz now has that Lich Bane, which is, this is pretty early for a Fizz to get a Lich Bane. Ambition has been doing a good job of farming up, has that assist as well. And now it's kind of a moment of danger here. Lust Boy's Oracle has expired right as Najin White Shield decides to start warding up again. So that Oracle didn't really do that much uh, for Lust Boy in this game because he kind of missed the rounds of wards put down by Shield. Oh, Flame fighting with save. Here we go. They've actually got a lot of damage put onto Goon there. Two shot barrage does miss. They've been taking some damage. Both teams playing just so tentative. Oh, look at this. So Flame trying to make a run. Save gets caught by the cocoon. He probably shouldn't have chased that one. Save popping Dominus. Can he live? Flame very, very low. They get back in. There's a zoning for the Zyra ultimate. Emperor chasing everyone down, doing a lot of damage. Goon pops over the wall. Lust Boy takes the kill. Onto Gorilla. It looks like it'll be a double, though, for Goong. 
now trying to chase down, save Goong and no face. CJ Blaze comes in, playful tricks over the wall. Goong very low on health. Emperor flashes to get in there. Can he get anything out of it? Ambition coming in to try to help out. Goon very low ambition. Looks like he'll be fine. It's a double kill for Emperor. In the end, CJ coming out a little bit ahead in that long team fight. And that's the situation that Najin White Shield really has to avoid. Yeah. CJ Blaze did a great job of setting up that skirmish. And even though they lost a couple members for it, the fact that Zepho wasn't with the group actually turned that into CJ Blaze's favor in a pretty big way. Uh, Zepha, had he been there, they do have the superior 5v5. So Let's check the replay. Yeah, if we take a look, Zepha's farming bot lane. So Save gets very low. Now Save does an excellent job of escaping this for Flash. Nofe comes in and he'll corral everyone with his Cataclysm right there. Gorilla gets caught out a little bit, but Goong manages to get the double kill with one orb of deception. Wow. And then Charm behind him, and then it's just running away from there. Emperor pursuing an ambition. You can see the damage done with that Lich Vein. And they're not going to be able to pick anything up. And in this entire time, Zepha has just been running across the map, not able to contribute. But he may have been able to ace Blaze had he been there. Yeah, it's quite possible. But Blaze, that said, Blaze would not have engaged that if Zepha, if they hadn't seen Zepha all the way in that bottom lane. Right. So I mean. it was a good decision for the composition that CJ Blaze is running. They want those skirmishes. They don't want the 5v5s. And they took advantage with their assassination potential. Yeah, I mean, we can really see that when you get CJ Blaze in sort of a dueling situation, and that was kind of a spread out dueling team fight, they're going to generally win. They've got that individual player skill, plus Najin White Shield, like you said, being down in 80 carry in the fight. Well, and they have Fizz and, and Vayne, too, which yeah. is immensely well, Assassin's helpful. Assassin's City, right? Yeah. yeah. So the next dragon fight is going to be really important for Najin White Shield. If they want to have a chance in this game, they've got to get that 5v5. They will have all their ults up at that time, all the ults up for both teams. So this could be pretty game deciding. Gorilla coming in to sweep with the Oracles. The vision advantage goes to Najin White Shield. Whoa. Huh. Got the charm over the wall. All the skill shots miss. And now Gorilla will clear that out with the Oracles. So Najin White Shield trying to push up that bot lane. They still do have their bottom turret available. And now it's all about that duel around the dragon pit. A dance with dragons has begun. That's right. We didn't have to wait five years for it, for this <laughs> one. Yeah. Well, we only have to wait for uh, dragon and baron dances for five years in the EU LCS. That's, that's true. <laughs> That's true. Oh, they got the ult onto Zephyr. Zephyr Arcane shifts away, but Ambition all over him with the Shen ult. And meanwhile, Daydream goes down almost immediately. Gorilla trying to back out of the fight. Flame zoning quite well. Now Ambition comes in for yet another one. Save goes down, just not very tanky with that build. And Emperor wants to claim one onto Goon, and he will. Double kill, though, goes through Ambition. He gets the killing blow. That was an insane taunt by Flame right there. That's what he does. He hit nearly everybody as they clustered together. <laughs> Didn't even have his flash up to do it either. So very poor positioning from Najin White Shield. They totally set themselves up for that one after Ambition had a bit of a questionable engage, but Flame entirely turning that around. You know, I mean, we talked about it before too, and, and this isn't like a new thing for Flame to be making huge, huge taunts in team fights. Let's watch, Let's watch that again. This is so good. Okay, so Ambition comes across. Zepha gets chunked nearly immediately. So we see three members that are, a full, yeah, three members cluster up for one taunt right over the ledge right there. And that buys enough time. Save in the meantime, finds himself dueling with Vayne, not a place you want to be in. And there's so that fun. second follow-up taunt. So Flame over the course of that team fight hitting four members with taunt. Very impressive Shen play. I feel like you just need to ban Shen against Flame. It's just too good. All right, well, Najin White Shield does manage to pick up the dragon after reviving, so they're not too far down right now. But they have to be much, much more careful in these team fights and respect Flame's abilities to wait for that big taunt and then land it. Yeah. And it's only going to be more dangerous when he has Flash up next time. Yep. Didn't be too long. Give that red buff over to Daydream, it looks like. In terms of itemization, the Tiamat into Sunfire pretty normal. That's going to allow Renekton to completely outpress, of course, the DFG first onto Ari. And we'll be moving into the last Whisper on Zepha now that he's completed the Trinity Force for that extra bit of poke damage. So 
The average is getting quite high for both of these teams. And here comes CJ Blaze. Can they get a pick? Possibly. On to someone from White Shield. Both save and Goon falling back. Now they don't want to get involved in that. And this is going to allow CJ Blaze to just push the lanes up. I mean, we saw White Shield rely so much on that smart maneuvering, on that map control, and CJ Blaze through these skirmishes is kind of just taking it all away. Yeah, Notch and White Shield definitely had the opportunities in the early game to shove the mid turret significantly harder than they did and get even deeper wards into the jungle. Uh, they didn't really use the gold that they invested into those wards particularly well early on in this game. Yeah. And now CJ Blaze is roaming with four as Shen mercilessly split pushes. And this is exactly the kind of situation that CJ Blaze wants to be in. Yeah and the position that Nodge and Whiteshield want to avoid. But it's too late now. So what do you think? Nodge and Whiteshield obviously trying to get all the vision control they can over their own jungle, but do they try to do something to kind of force that 5v5 team fight? Looks like they're trying to get a little bit more vision over Baron. But it's not going to be easy. I mean, the thing is, is that even if they do have a big team fight, CJ Blaze just has so many ways to break it up, you know, to break up the team fight into these smaller duels. I mean, honestly, if I was dodging White Shield right now, I'd be sweeping the south side of my jungle and trying to uh, gank flame with five members, in a, if that's possible. But they really need to make a play on Shen because he's the dangerous one to come in with the four members and not going to be able to ult away if you hit him with multiple people. But you can see that Flame is very tentative right there. When Save shows the slightest bit of aggression, he immediately taunts out because he doesn't know where anyone on this team is at the moment. Yeah, exactly. And so far, Nodge and White Shield using that true shot barrage to try to keep the lanes pushing in their favor. CJ Blaze taking control of the Baron area of the map. And they've got vision right now. And oh, Gorilla has to use his flash ambition coming over the wall in anticipation of that death sentence hitting. Yeah, smart Close call there. Smart move by Lust Boy. And both teams trying to set up a pick right there, but yeah. CJ Blaze far more dangerous in that department. Although with Ari with the Void Staff now, she can take out a couple of members pretty easily depending on who she manages to encounter and Whoa. save. He went deep, man. Flame and save dueling in this bot lane. Everybody moving over there now. Flame very, very low. Save going in on this one. Goon coming in. They're going to get the kill on to save. Flame lives. Oh, man. Saving a little bit too deep there. No pay. And a few other members of S.H.I.E.L.D. coming up, but they're a little bit too late. Meanwhile, yeah. Guggen Ambition here dueling in the jungle. He had no wards there either far up, so he had no idea that that rotation was coming because we do see CJ Blaze manage to maintain control around the Baron, and yeah. there was a possibility there that um, they would be baiting at Baron as well. So not the most obvious rotation in the world, just a lot of mystery for Nodge and White Shield to deal with. Yeah. Still, still definitely not unwinnable for Nodge and White Shield, but not going to be easy at this point. You can't really duel, and you can't really team fight, and you can't really push safely. Uh, they can they can team fight in the right circumstances. Um, they are going to be pretty tanky, um, but they don't have that Aegis yet. Meanwhile, Daydream already completing that. It's going to be a pretty oh, important flame. difference. You catch no fate with the cocoon. Daydream and Flame trying to get out of the jungle. Ambition already recalling there. No fame. They do get the flash out of Daydream. And now the main split push begins. And that's one of the big dangers for Blaze, too, is that it's not just Jen. And this is actually something we've never seen from CJ Blaze before, which is the willingness to solo split push with Vayne. I don't think uh, they ever had a carry that could really do it before. Well, Captain Jack is a good Vayne player, but it there are only certain teams that are willing to do this. Yeah. And she's going to back off immediately after they see the recalls coming down. Doesn't want to get cut off in a pick right there. But Emperor, he's the best choice to go up against the Renekton at this point. And they're, they may switch up to a 3-1-1 split push. Even though their three core is pretty weak, they're not going to be able to push a lane with it. But if they can get enough vision control over one side of the jungle, they'll be in a good situation in order to prevent quick rotations just because of the fear of Fizz. Yeah. 
Yeah, I feel like with Emperor 2, though, I mean, we, I, I feel like when I watch him, I see a little bit more confidence and willingness to kind of live a little bit more dangerously than Captain Jack did. Yeah, Despite that's, his great cleanses and everything, I see. I feel like there's just more confidence there, you know? Yeah, that's definitely true. He's, he doesn't play as passively. Yeah. Okay, well, they're going to just five-man this, which I think is the absolutely right decision for Naj and White Shield right now. They have to do something. Oh, the ultimate from Fizz does miss. Says his arrow. Nope. Nope. Can't get a little bit caught off. Nice death set. His progression backline. Meanwhile, Zepha trying to kite backwards. CJ, everybody coming in. There's the box. They do lock up Zepha quite nicely. He'll go down. Daydream the only casualty so far on Blaze, and they're going to go ahead and take out Save as well. A one for four. Goom barely escapes. Yet another double kill for Emperor, and that is a really good step in the right direction for CJ. That's going to be an aberrant for sure. Well, at this point, with how farmed Ambition has managed to get, and already having that Zonias as well, uh, I mean, there's just so much damage coming out of CJ Blaze. And it was the right call for Nodge and Whitechill to do that because they were simply inferior at split pushing. They were inferior at creating picks. And so the only thing they had left was, can we actually win if we group as five and start sieging a turret? And the answer is no. So at this point, it's looking grim for Shield and great for Blaze. If we take a look sure at is. this again, Ambition misses his ult, but a nice use of Stand United in order to initiate this fight. Anaj and Shield didn't quite kite back fast enough right there, and they got chunked hugely. Goong has to use his ult to escape. Pretty much everything used just to get out. Lust Boy with a great box right there, catching three members, and that allows Ambition just to bait the rest of them in with Zonyas. Yeah. A little bit of contention over Dragon here between the two teams, but Blaze should be able to take it again after that last team fight. I don't, I don't think that Shield has any interest in 5v5, 5v5 being a Baron powered CJ Blaze. No, uh, but again, wave push, or wave clear rather, not great for CJ Blaze. So they don't have a composition where they're going to be able to siege turrets even with Baron particularly effectively. They really need to make a pick first. Yeah. Because their siege is, their siege is just terrible though. Well, I think they're okay with that. So in spite of the fact that there's not a lot, I feel that Naj and White Shield can do to come out with a victory right now. Um, there's also not, it's going to be a while before CJ Blaze can actually finish out this game. We'll see though, uh, Naj and White Shield just using that superior wave clear in order to wait out the Baron buff. And Flame just farming once again in the top lane. He's still got that stand united. Didn't even need to use it in that last last fight. Yeah, Ambition's going to be the most helpful person for Wave Player with Playful Trickster right. at this point. But it's not quite as good as a Tiamat powered Renekton and Inari. Not in White Shield. Think about trying to make a pick there, but then they break off just a little bit. Yeah, Ambition is there already. And it's a little bit worrisome. Sending Ambition down to the bot lane once again, just to keep that. The only thing up. they can do is split push in order to yeah. end this game. And they need Ambition there because he's got the Lich Bane and will be able to take out towers very effectively. Also hard to duel for Nodge and White Shield right now as well, of course. And Gorilla gets caught a little bit. They actually grab save here. Gorilla going down very, very fast. CJ plays Bane in the back in a lot of trouble. Goes down to Goon. Goon caught in the middle of everything, though. He'll go down to a kill from Lust Boy. Zeffa trying to back off. He's been slowed a bit. Nice play there to get him back into the team fight. Flame comes in, taunt over the wall to get away. And that was pretty good for Shield, actually. Yeah, that was not a good pick for CJ Blaze. Oh. Uh, they didn't have Fizz there, who is a substantial amount of their damage. And when Emperor got focused down immediately, even with the Stand United on top of him, that's just not going to be something that works out particularly well for you. He probably shouldn't have been in that brush with the rest of the members, standing a little further back so at least he could create some distance to start off with him because they've got a lot of gap closers with Jarvan and Renekton, and so it made it pretty easy for Nodge and White Shield to get the only source of damage in that four-man fight. Right. And so far, the bot lane is saved because of all that. And really, Nodge and White Shield still only 6k gold down, but 
this is one of those games where the gold totals aren't, you know, they, they're farther down than they look. Again, because of those early pink boards they bought before in the game, and, and also just sort of situationally, their items don't really end up mattering quite as much with the map presence that CJ has right now. Yeah, and Fizz needs so few items to be insanely deadly. And he's gotten those. And he has them. He's pretty much insanely deadly right yes. now. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much everything you could ever want on Fizz. The rest of it is just gravy from here on out. Zyra grabs him, you could call it deadliest catch. Deadliest catch. Right. And now Nigel White Shield trying to push up the middle again. Save isn't there. And it looks like they will back off. Trying to maybe make a bit of a pick, we'll see. No, not so much. You know, the play calling for Shield it does feel a bit disjointed at this point. I mean, it's, yeah, they're in that situation, but... It know. just feels, they feel a lot more uh, reluctant, a lot less confident than they did yeah. against the Genera Stealths. They, they played scared early on when they had very clear vision of what was going on with CJ Blaze. Right. And they let Blaze what, to do what Blaze does, which is farm, super farm, flame and ambition in the side lanes. And when Ambition's playing a champion like Fizz that does a lot with a little, that just, you can't let that happen yeah. without punishing it in some way. And instead, they kind of just diddled around the mid lane. Well, either way, it is best of three. So even if they do end up losing this one, they've got time to come back and be a bit more confident. Well, I mean, they're they're just playing tower defense at this point. Yeah. And uh, this is this game is still likely going to go for a while if CJ Blaze can't get a pick because their siege is just so poor. So their ability to close is limited. It is irritating. Now Baron's up in about a minute. I feel like if there's going to be a big team fight soon, it's going to be around there. Oh, I don't and think. And you can see White Shield clearing out. The, she, area. the thing is, Shield doesn't need to team fight because if Blaze does Baron, they can just poke into the pit all day. Uh, it is actually very dangerous for Blaze to go for a 5v5 Baron in spite of their lead. Now, well, Flame has the Randwin's Omen now, so he's got pretty much everything a Shen could want as well. Yeah. Except for like a friendly ninja buddy. Because Zed, the whole Zed thing didn't work out, so. Yeah, you gotta gotta get a Kali in here. That's true. Kali and Cannon. I guess he does have ninja buddies, doesn't he? They're just better ninjas than him. That's true. They're actually sneaky. He doesn't know where they are. <laughs> he can't find them in this game, Doa. That's right. Well, we don't see him right now. If you have ninja friends, it's awfully hard to get a hold of them. That's true. I mean, you're like, hey, you try to call them up, and like, oh, they're ninjas. They don't have phones. Because, I mean, nothing's worse than you're on a ninja contract and suddenly your phone goes off. <laughs> it ruins everything, let me tell you. Oh, the Trishon Barrage. No! no! Very close. Especially with Thresh there dealing yeah. the final blow. You can always count on your support, though. Yeah, Daydream intentionally not using Smite right there. Yeah. Wants to save it for Baron if necessary. Oh, yeah. a skin that's like awkward moviegoer Shen or something where just like he's pager nobody's a pager anymore but like his cell phone goes off at like inopportune times you know standing it would it would suit the character standing a brush trying to gank and suddenly like you hear on your screen even though you can't see him he's oh boy very dangerous but they are yeah. just letting flame split push right here are they going to just go for the baron they're still trying to set up the pick they're trying to get that vision control back Dangerous situation. And ambition. Oh, they're right in a ward. Oh man. Oh, Gorilla could grab him so easy. They wanna they wanna charm him. Oh, there we go. They're gonna go on the lust boy instead. They actually missed the QE combo. Goon coming in. They managed to take out Lust Boy. Almost no shed. Sand United coming in. Goon goes down in the back line very quickly. Lust Boy falls, but that's okay because CJ has that dueling situation they want now. Zephyr though gets the kill on ambition. Double kill though for Ambition as he dies. Daydream trying to back up save in the back lines. Pretty deep. Emperor trying to kite as best as he can. Can save get in there? Oh, a double kill for Daydream. 
He and Emperor barely, barely get to take out save, and, and no fast to back off. Now Jin White Shield really overcommitted to the Lust Boy kill. It should have been aborted when all of their CC missed, but they continued to go after it, and even though Nofei managed to get the Cataclysm down, which basically trapped Shen inside the ultimate, which was a good idea because that forced Flame to make a decision about how he was going to use his Flash and his Taunt, and it made it so that he couldn't get a lot of people in that taunt. Well, let's, let's watch this again. So right here, they miss everything. This is where you back off. But Goom continues to go in, and he gets in a bad position where Ambition gets right on top of him with the ultimate. Now look at this. No Fame manages to bottle up people inside of his ultimate, and Flame doesn't really get to be a part of this fight until much later on. However, still, they group up in that brush, and that causes the taunt to hit two, and after that, it's pretty much just clean up here from Emperor. There's not anybody who's going to be able to stop him. Yep. So, kind of a dire straits right now for Notch and Shield. Not a lot they can do. They're 12k gold down now. Yeah, Daydream even getting a Banshee's Veil at this point, just so that he's not going to be caught out. He has that extra MR against the Ari burst as well. So, good pickup in the late game situation, especially if he's going to be running point through the jungle. Yeah, here they go. Now CJ Blaze still going to have some problems with the siege right here. They're going to continue to split push. They've sent Emperor into that mid lane because nobody can actually duel him right now as they shove the wave closer on in. Yeah, he's gonna just rotate bottom as well with Lust Boy and Close that out as well. Everybody recalling from CJ Blaze in the meantime. Like a little bit of a strange time to recall right there. But Flame has gone back, picked up his Thorn Mail. So he is about as tanky huh. as tanky can be. Yeah. He's up a full Randuin in terms and Thorn Mail in terms of rank uh, uh, armor items. On save, save still with that Tiamat. But Let's see how much armor he has when they click on him, we'll see. Uh, 324. 324, yeah, that's pretty tanky. Yeah, he also has that alacrity enchantment just because he needs that mobility both on the map and in terms of the team fights. All that armor weighs him down. Well, not anymore. He's, he's pretty yeah. speedy, speedy little ninja right now in spite of is all those steel plates. That's why he got it. I don't know. Shen just continues to be kind of an undergressive ninja. Buying all this armor, not even getting ninja tabby. <laughs> they put a, they put an item with the word ninja in it in the game, and he still doesn't buy it. Shen, I don't know. I don't know about you, Shen. I don't know about you, Shen. You're a crazy guy. Keeping your swords behind your back like that, your arms like held up the entire game. His hands have to like be totally asleep by the end of most, most matches. Well, certainly after 38 minutes here, they are. Yeah, no kidding. And GA now on to Ambition also, so they, I, there's just, again, there's not a lot Dodge and White Shield can do, but there's not really much that CJ can do to close out this game. So we're kind of stuck in League of Legends purgatory right now. I guess so. You don't actually see this too often, but it's one of the dangers of, of running a comp like the one we see CJ plays run. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, yes, our comp worked, and then you're like, well, this actually, uh, this reminds me of the uh, TSM versus OMG game at the World Championship where they were also stuck in League of Legends Purgatory where OMG had an obvious advantage but couldn't, had the wrong composition to close out the game. Yeah. This needs a slow, painful death for Dodge and White Shield. And I mean, that could be kind of a detriment to Shield as well. I mean, in situations like this, because when you lose sort of that long, grueling game, that can be a little bit tough to deal with mentally sometimes. Be uh, tiring. Yeah, they're doing the, the best they can to defend, though, and they can defend quite well, as you can see. It's just. Well, they know, too, that there is still a chance that if CJ makes a critical mistake in a team fight, they can respond pretty quickly with, you know, possibly an inhibitor, depending on how the lanes are. So it's not like it's completely over for Shield. It's just. Well, and Shield found themselves over. in a very similar situation in their last game in this tournament That's where they had lost true. two inhibitors and the enemy was closing in on their Nexus and they managed to hit a really nice pick inside their base, which gave them a perfect ace, and then they just ran across the map and won the game. Yeah. No big get big grab there. We'll see what happens. Flame's starting to put some damage onto that the inhibitor turret. 40 minutes in, and all the inhibitor turrets are still up. Yep. 
an uncommon situation. Ambition eating a charm Ooh. right there. He's got to be careful. Yeah. But uh, just uses the playful trickster to get out of the range. Flame still trying to do what he can in the mid lane, but looks like this top tower may be the first one to go down. They've got to be careful, though. The catch from Nofe, very high on that Jarvan. Yeah, they do need to be a little bit cautious here. We're rotating over to the mid lane. It looks like they might just be content to go grab Dragon, I guess, at this point. Well, I think they want to use this opportunity where we have under two minutes from Baron just to go ahead, take the Dragon again, and then go back and set up wards because they don't have any wards now. That last one expired around that Baron. They need to make sure they can take it safely. This is the, the best chance that they're going to have to do that. Yeah. That is true. It's not so bad if you let your opponent out of their base if they don't have any sort of farm to really get at that point from the jungle. And yeah. there's another dragon for CJ Blaze. However, by Lost Boy helping to take that dragon, even when he really wasn't doing that much because he's fresh, even though he does have 10,000 gold in this game, wow. which is 3,500 more than Gorilla, uh, it, it gives Notch and White Shield a bit of time to set up around the Baron themselves, get some wards down, and now it's just going to be a little longer while they clear them out. Yeah, you can see too, Lost Boy even picking up that Negatron Cloak to try to survive the burst from Goom's Ari if he needs to. Yeah, there's pretty much nothing that that Nodge and White Shield can do at this point in time. Yeah. Those insta-give picks from Ari just uh, aren't going to happen in this game anymore at this point. No, they certainly are not. Nope. Oh, here we go, CJ. Moving up towards Baron. And try to get a little bit more vision there, I guess. Or a pick, maybe. There's a ward there. I mean, it doesn't really matter if there's a ward there. They're so far ahead, and they are noticing it right now. No fake. I'm trying to make it dramatic. Come on. Well, the split push, I mean, really, they just want to bait this as long as possible so they can make sure that Flame makes some headway on the lane right here. Yeah. Save did go back down there, too. So they do have that 5v4 if they want to stand united and go in on this. See, they're going for Baron. All right, here we go. And Flame actually. He's trying to get his stand united up. He had to run away. Can he actually pour? No. Nope. Oh, he doesn't do it. Okay, well, they get Baron anyway, but Flame in a little bit of trouble. Trying to back off now. Can save and Zephyr catch him? He has his flash. Yeah, he should be okay. There's a taunt in the bush. Goon coming in. Flame is solo. There's a flash in the bush, but Spirit Rush for Goon. Oh man, it's, he's so low, Zepha. One more arcane shift will do it. Mystic shot gets blocked. Oh, true shot barrage. Finishes the job, but unfortunately the inhibitor going down. Yeah, smile on Flame's face right there, but we have yeah. the fight going on in the base. That's right, the ult from Ambition on to save. Not the most Ambition. Looks like Emperor will take his first kill of the game. There goes Gorilla. They're getting pushed back pretty hard. Ambition low, but he slows that GA save. As his ultimate up, they can just wait that one out. They can actually just back off here. They got the inhibitor. Totally worth losing flame for. Only a second death of the game. That's not too bad. No, it's not. And by using that true shot barrage as well to finish him off, they didn't have any way really to stop them from taking that inhibitor as well. Yeah. So they've got some time, wait for flame to come back up, and now they'll have the super minion push that they really needed that in made. order to actually finish off this game. The super minion push that they've always wanted. Well, well, it's been, a, it's been a long while. Let's take a look at actually what happened to this inhibitor right there. Well, Zyra ult goes off. It's absolutely nobody. Nobody gets a couple good knockups right there, but Save finds himself with the Earth on him. Ambition gets onto Gorilla with a nice flash right there. Zonius to protect himself. Ember chases off the rest, and that'll allow Daydream and Ambition to escape with nearly no HP. Nice zone there by Emperor. Man, uh, actually, Goong mistimed his charm right at the very end of that Zonia's. It was like a split second oh. too early. If he would have hit with that, that would have been a dead Ambition. That would have been a nice consolation prize anyway. Dead fish. That's right. Which can be tasty. They are tasty. Yeah. Just only right away, not after like a couple days. <laughs> then, not so much. Ambition doesn't have any mana right now, but is charging up a little bit. And now they're going to go for the top bot split push yeah. to make it as difficult as possible for this Dodge and White Shield team to defend this. 
Well, it's kind Here of it the... comes. That bot turret is very, very low as well. Yeah. The slow death continues. You're not in white shield. Lost Boy taking a little bit of damage. He's okay. And here we go. Yeah, that turret's not going to last very long at all. Ambition has to back off, though. They need to be a little bit careful. Flame, in the meantime, there's nothing really careful about that. But he's going right after the turret. They actually grab Goong. They're coming in. There's the box. They don't get him with the play, but he's so low anyway. An easy kill from Ambition. Save coming in the back. Dominus is Pop Zeffa already on the run. The Cocoon grabs him. He goes down. Double kill for Emperor already. That is going to be it. A double kill for Ambition on top of it. The Nexus turrets go down. The Nexus will be soon to follow. And CJ Blaze takes game one. Yeah, and there was a, I really like Nodge and White Shield's early game, but CJ Blaze did a much better job of using their strategy in the mid and late game and closing yeah. that one out. Ambition. You know, it just seemed like Nodge and White Shield was just a little bit too scared. They were they a little were. bit too uh And they had tentative. no reason to be scared too. They had yeah. so much vision control in the early game. Well, there, no doubt there is a bit of an intimidation factor going up against the 